Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, I'm going to give you eight tips about Bermuda grass and why it's important to keep it short and what to apply now to make the soil much better for your gorgeous grass in the summertime. I'm sure most of you are like me and looking at this dormant brown looking grass. Dormant just means that it's asleep and it goes to sleep in the winter time to conserve nutrients and moisture into the ground. But this grass right here behind me, the brown part will never ever turn green. So it's important to keep this grass cut short to prevent disease. So actually when you look at this dormant grass right here, this is Bermuda and you can now also have zoysia grass that will go dormant. This is a warm weather grass so it turns brown in the winter time to conserve nutrients and water. And actually I originally thought that this grass right here will turn green in the springtime but it actually does not. So in the springtime you have to get all of this off the ground so that is called scalping. So in the next image you're going to see my husband taking our grass down to about one inch and then when this starts turning I'm going to say about halfway green and I'll show another image for you. When it turns halfway green, we're going to take this down to a half an inch to get all this dead part off. That will encourage new growth and it will give room for the new grass to come up. So tip number one is to keep your Bermuda or your zoysia grass short in the wintertime. This will decrease the risk of disease. Tip number two, keeping your warm weathered grass short promotes healthy green up, it prevents disease, and it prevents thash. And when the temperatures get into the 65 temperature range for your area, this will um, promote healthy green up. Tip number three is to prevent weeds. February, late January, early February is the perfect time to, pre to put a pre-emergent down to prevent weeds in the summertime. The pre-emergent will help the seedlings not to germinate. So it's important if you don't want summer weeds. And I use an Anderson's product and I'll throw that up on the screen. And all the products that I talk about in today's video will be linked down in my description. Tip number four is to bag all your clippings. If you leave the clippings on top of your grass, it will smother your new grass and it will not green up. It will harbor disease and prevent the new grass from growing up. So yes, it is absolutely important to get all your clippings and bag the clippings and remove. Tip number five is to keep your blades on your mower very sharp. This also helps when you're scalping your grass. You want to scalp your grass at least to one inch the very first time and then early spring when it's starting to warm up to about 65 then you want to take that clippings all the way back down to a half an inch. Just a FYI, never scalp fescue. Not all grasses benefit from scalping. Tip number six is to put down soil amendment onto your grass. I live here in Charlotte, North Carolina, zone 8, 7B to zone 8, and I have heavy clay soil. So my soil is good for some things and really bad for some other, and it's really not good for Bermuda grass. So I really need to amend my soil. And when I learned about amending your soil, I learned that if you put, I put this carbon Pro-G, and I got this from Site One, and I'll throw the links also into the description. And there's another product that I like from Anderson's, it's called Hematar. So I kind of alternate between this one and the other one. And I have done this in my garden for the last year and a half, and I'm going to continue to do this for a total of three years. That way, my soil will be completely amended, the roots will have some great soil to grow into, and once you get your soil amended, then you will be able to reduce the amount of fertilizer that you're putting onto your grass because your roots will be super happy and appreciative that it has great soil to grow in. FYI, I put this product on my soil at least 
once a month for a total of two to three years. And I also have like a little video or a image of what my soil samples look like after the year and a half that I did this past summer and I'll include that in this video. Here's five core samples that we took from our yard. The two on the left are from our backyard. The three on the right are from common space. And as you can see, the ones from our backyard where the soil conditioner has been added, we have good healthy soil. So maybe two inches out of the five inches of sample there. So like I said, we've added soil conditioner for the last year and a half. And the goal is to add some kind of conditioner over the next two to three years to get this soil to turn over from this hard clay to a good healthy soil. Why do we do this? Bottom line is that the roots will be happier, greener, and over the years we will have to add less fertilizer. Tip number seven is that you can apply a slow fertilizer to your garden right now or to your grass right now. You can do it to your garden as well. But anyways, I like a product called Melorganite. It is a slow release. You never, never want to add a quick release quick release fertilizer to your lawn when it's dormant so but a slow release is absolutely fine that way it will allow the product to seep into the ground and when the temperatures warm up to a nice 65 then it will be there ready for you for your grass to grow FYI, I love another product called Anderson's 101010. This is a slow release fertilizer. And when the temperatures warm up in March, I always put the slow release fertilizer onto my grass. But you can use Melorganite or the Anderson's 101010 or any type of other slow release fertilizer that you like. But I truly do, do like the Anderson's products. And finally, tip number eight is to pull up all your winter weeds. It's easy to see since your grass is dormant and brown and your weeds are green. So if you're seeing any green right now in your Bermuda or your Zoysia grass or any kind of warm to weather grass, most likely it is definitely a weed. So right now, and I'm gonna turn the camera around, I'm having a problem with poa grass, which poa is an annual blue grass and it grows in cool weather, which is cool right now because it's I'm gonna live in Charlotte, North Carolina, and it is late January, and I'm gonna say the temperatures right now are in the 50s or so. So I'm going to actually remove this poa grass. It's very easy to pull up by hand, and I'm gonna use a little $3 tool that is gonna help me in that process. And if you have a large area of poa grass and you don't know what to do with it, it's gonna be too hard to pull up, you can use a product called so the product to kill this poa grass that you can use, and there's several different part products on the market, is called Orthograss Be Gone Garden Grass Killer. So this is what poa grass looks like. A lot of people think this is a crabgrass, but if you see or think that you have crabgrass right now, you do not because that will germinate early in the spring. But once these, and I don't know if you can see it close up, there's a little bit of sea heads right there if you can see these sea heads right there you want to pull these weeds up or annual grass bluegrass before you start to see these seed heads because once these seed heads start to appear you are going to have a major problem and this will germinate into hundreds of different poa grass now this poa grass will die into the summertime and it's going to leave lots of dark spots onto your grass and it's not very pretty so it is very easy to pull up by hand you can see let's see if i can get some of this some of it it's very easy to pull up by hand but i do have a lot of in this area so i'm going to use this tool this is just like a little weed tool and I can get up underneath there and pull this up pretty easy I'm saying it's easy but I'm struggling like so let me back up here a little bit you could see that just in this one patch right here I have a problem with this poa grass right there 
And let me swing around to my other side of the grass and you could see that I just do not have hardly any weeds here at all in this grass. So looking forward to an absolute green grass this summer. So I hope this video was helpful. I absolutely love a green, thick lawn and it makes my gardens just pop and look gorgeous. I never understand when you have spent all your time on gorgeous gardens and they just let their grass grow. It do really does make a difference. Like the whole upkeep on your house really does make a difference with gorgeous grass and gorgeous gardens. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.